Hey there everybody, welcome back to Metroid Prime, this is Spiraling Helix. Last time we made our way through the Fendrano Drifts, further into them actually, and we did other things as well. But we got the wave beam which shoots electric stuff so we almost have lasers, it's not quite laser tech though. Almost. This time, though, we will head onwards through the research facility that we've heard about by going through the purple doors. So let's do that. And as you can see, that's not a turret. Actually, I can scan that to disable the turret. We have space pirates. In fact, this guy is a shadow pirate. And these guys are mainly f used in stealth operations, they can turn invisible, although thankfully they won't, because they're friendly, and they wouldn't do that to me. But, as you can see, the wave beam is extremely good at stunning things. Before the power beam, like, it would do a brief stun and you have to time your shots very effectively, but the wave beam is great for stunning things, including electrical things. Which, it can then make them go crazy and shoot everywhere. But inside this place we have some... What? Well, this is a research facility, of course there's going to be a whole lot of things to scan. But heading forward, I believe the... Oh, this guy comes in. Samus, what are you doing? Just letting it scan you? Come on. Guess we're gonna have to fight these guys. These guys though. Finally, we are actually scanning the space pirates. It's took long enough. We've scanned the shadow pirates and the flying pirates before then. But we can finally scan the space pirates. I recommend you do it now. You won't be able to scan them for quite a while as shadow pirates tend to be running around in this facility more than these guys. They're your typical bad guys. I like using the wave beam on them. Also, the wave beam, a bit like missiles, can shoot, will home in on enemies. So I can like aim up off to left, and it will home in around corners and stuff. Very good use of attack. The wave beam is, and I actually like using a lot against the power beam. It's pretty much the power beam has rapid fire. That's the only advantage it has. Plus, pretty much every door, except for this one that I'm going to right now, every door is purple, pretty much. So we have some Phazon and some thermal stones or stuff like that. Phazon ore, which is pretty much stones, you can detect it with thermal, blah blah blah. It's research. East Quarantine Cave restricted to blue level security. Well, I wonder what blue level means. And we have Project Titan specimen immobilized in the quarantine cave. Relocation is recommended, but we have a map station first. And I can't even remember if I went over it back in the research frigate, but once you do collect a map from a map station, by the way, this is the research lab. This over here, totally not a boss arena at all. But this is the research lab here. We got a few bigger rooms here and here. Got a thing there and thing there and that's pretty much it. That's all the map reveals. And I love this glitch. If you skip the map cutscene, this will come down as if you're going through it. It's really funny. But as you can see, I can't scan it after I get the map. So it is a missable scan. So make sure you get them too. I say after I go and get the map. Anyway, even though we defeated all the space pirates, there is still one of these. Are these regular? Yeah, they're regular. The turrets do get an upgrade later in the game, so like, just checking. Now, sometimes I like using the wave beam on the turrets because it homes in and it's actually hard enough to hit the turrets as is. However, when it goes crazy, yes it can hit the pirates, but you're not really going to be hitting pirates with those things. You're going to get hit more so. And we have a force field, but been a while since we've seen a force field. We can just deactivate it with access to research lab Hydra granted. And deactivating that, there are of course some pirates walking around. Are these normal? Okay, they are normal. 
So I guess all the pirates here are normal until we kill them all and then they're dead space pirates. Is that more? Uh, I think that's more further up. Also, can, while I'm scanning all the panels here, the space pirate music. This is the first time we're hearing it. Or well, the last room was the first time we're hearing it. Or well, the room before last. You know what room I mean. But it is an awesome battle music thing. And now that we are scanning all these panels, most of which are going to be talking about Phazon and all of that stuff, you can guess what's going to happen. We have a whole bunch of the pirate data that we'll be scanning. Yes, I say data, not data. Although I'll probably say data later on in the game anyway. I say both. So this is about mining operations for Phazon and getting stuff. This one, you can read all of these. I'll try and keep them on screen for a bit so I'm not like... Keep... Or like... Keep... The... Oh! Just f f watch the videos. It'll all work out there. So this is about terraforming on Talon 4 and creatures and stuff. And that's 50% of the logbook scanned! Woo! Sweet! And in saying that, now that we have 50% of the logbook scanned, upon completing different like requirements in the game, like scanning the logbook, like scanning oh so much of the logbook, and like, so like 50%, 75%, 100%, I don't know the exact numbers, but they will unlock some special bonuses that you can access from the main menu of the game, no matter if you're in the trilogy version or the original version. And I thought there would be another pir pirate data over there. Oh, there it is. Okay. But, which one's this about? Um, parasites, it seems to be all about. And how they're very resilient, as we'll see a few variations. We've seen the ice, we've seen the normal one that the pirates can't take care of, and others. But, I can't even remember, right. Uh, bonuses! That's what I was talking about. Uh, don't scan that now, don't scan that now. But bonuses. So, are you not dead? I thought you were dead. How are you not dead yet? There we go. So, bonuses. You also get unlock a few access to a few bonuses to actually unlock the bonuses you use those tokens we've been collecting. And I'll go into those a bit more later on, like probably in a bonus episode or just near the end of the playthrough. But there's still more pirates? Wow, there's heaps in this room. One more here, there you are. But you also get unlock a few of them, the art books I believe you unlock just by getting a certain way into the game. I believe you unlock a cert, like a specific thing after you defeat Flagra. I could be wrong there, but I think after you defeat Flagra, you get some stuff. And this is all just boring stuff about Phazon and mutation strains and how that they've gone through a lot of experiments. Do not handle sedated xenomes. And also they're using it to power up different creatures. Get them to the next level. We've named it Strain Vertigo. Or the current strain it seems, or the previous one, I don't know. Tissue samples to be hand carried to Lab Hydra. And what's this pirate data about? Uh, no, not opening the map. Don't know how I managed to do that. Research outpost Glacier 1 in the Fendrana Drifts is operating at 85% capacity. So I guess this whole outpost is called Glacier 1? I just call it the research lab. And other stuff. Good for keeping creatures cold. Daily decontamination is required. Other stuff here and there. But scanning this pillar in particular, it's made of cordite, and you can hear that humming that you hear everywhere. Did I miss a... Hold on a minute. Did I somehow... Oh no, the radar shows some enemies in the next room, so I thought I'd missed a turret or something. But no, they're in here. So just hiding behind these boxes. Did I destroy it or did the turret? Um... 
Let me hide behind these to find out. Oh, the toads! Wow, the toads are effective at destroying them. And missiles, just to stop you from going through. There's another one. How are there so many? I thought there were a lot less defenses when going through here. And I don't know how that didn't hit me, but oh well. And doesn't the guy... Yes, I, I knew that. I saw you coming from a mile away. I was like, I'm pretty sure Pyro jumps in my face here. And I was right. Pyro jumped in my face. But I was ready. And he... That was a very interesting jump there. I love how they just fall down. And more Pyro... Okay, I did not see that guy jumping in my face. I'll admit that. Stop jumping in my face! Darn it! Darn space pirates. Just all of them can die. Oh, you actually had to kill all of them to activate that panel. Interesting. And this room, if I take a look at the map, I am in the observatory. Just wanted to check something, eh? Okay. So in the observatory, I can scan this. And it doesn't seem to be activated, neither does the one up there. So I guess we have to activate the observatory in order to get some cool stuff. But before that, pirate data. There is so much pirate data here. So this is of the spiral sector. Massive energy spike. And they found this is them pretty much finding talent for and it being a potential source of power, because energy spikes and all of that. This is, that's what drew them here. This one though is about phase on mining and the Chozo ruins. Um, research headquarters. This is just about them implanting the different facilities here, I guess. But let's actually start activating the observatory. And the music here is just the basic one, not as cool as the normal Fendrana Drifts one we heard outside. But these are just telling us about the observatory and how it works, isn't it? Yeah, I don't care about that. So let's just activate these bomb slots. Ball slots, technically, they're called in this one. I think in the later games they're called bomb slots, so you'll hear me calling them that quite often. But we have some pistons, and they're unfortunately not in sync with the music, even if they look like it sometimes. So they'll just be pumping away, doing piston stuff. Don't know how they're needed for an observatory, but uh, I guess it's okay. But there's the lower node activated, all we have to do is use these spinners down here. Four of them. I mean, it's cool, but... We have to do this four times. I guess it doesn't take long at all. And it kind of makes sense. But upon activating this last spinner, we will restore the observatory. I don't know why it was deactivated though. I mean, what were the pirates doing that required it to be deactivated? Anyway, with that, you can see something weird up there. We've seen something like it, but... Uh, let's just ignore that and that. Yeah, so many things here just saying, oh, this has been used. But the observatory, we can scan the different planets here. Most of these are in the same system. I say most of these because I'm pretty sure one of them, maybe not. But we have a planet here best known for twin fever. And you die. Okay. We have another planet here. These are just random planets to give you information against... Nothing we're ever going to visit. Nuclear dust storms. That sounds terrifying. But this one here is red. This is a research item. This is Planet Talon 4. This is the one we are on right now. So it indicates it is a biological paradise. Before it was impacted by an extraterrestrial object. Probably that meteor that was mentioned at in the Chozo Law. What remains is slowly fading due to exposure to phazon radiation. A current rate of decay will be a wasteland in 25 years. Scan that one. Ah, this is the other big one. This is Planet Zebus, the previous stronghold for the pirates, which got blown up by Samus in Super Metroid. I have played that game. Not as easy as these ones, in my opinion, but that's because it's an older 
2D game back when the games used to be more difficult. But now that we've, like, I think there's one more planet I forgot to scan. Yes, right in the middle here. Planet Billium. Nothing important since in quarantine. Don't go there because it's got a deadly virus. Okay. Maybe we should go there. Maybe we could take down the world with the deadly virus. But before I collect that, I want to head in here. We have a nice save point. I'm not going to save this time. And I mean it. I won't even heal. But it's just... Oh, I guess the observatory was down for a bit and it needed maintenance. Good thing Samus was here. Samus, on the job. If you ever need a repair in your space, space pirate facility, don't call Samus because she'll probably kill all of you. But here we have the Super Missile. This is by far my second favourite upgrade in this game. I say second because there is another one later on that is just overpowered and I love it. But we have the Super Missiles. Now, this will only work with the Power Beam. What you have to do is charge it up and then use a missile while charged. It's very powerful, uses up five missiles though. With the wave beam, if we try the exact same, it can't work. But that ice spreader we saw in the Magmore Caverns, maybe that has something to do with what we can do. Also, if you've been reading my bios, you already have some spoilers against some of the weapons we'll be getting. This is an old game. I'm, I'm not worried about spoiling small things like that. I mean, you can kind of guess what we'll get. We've got... Um, default weapon, we've got electricity, you can guess the other two things we'll be getting. But heading up here, we have a locked door. Because we have pirates, and I'll just use the wave beam to stun a few of these guys. So really, wave beam, I love it. Great against different enemies, especially pirates in general. Because they're like, they use cybernetic implants as their weapons, I think, as mentioned. And that guy's burning alive, because we exploded that crate. Usually those very small crates with the symbols on it explode. But now we've got some flying pirates. We have already scanned these guys back in the Talon overworld. But our super missiles are extremely effective against these guys. And they can drop very good energy units. But let's not use our super missiles on this guys. On this guy. So even though you can stun him from using weapons at least, he'll keep moving and they will try to dive bomb you after you defeat them. However, super missiles just blow them up. It's glorious. Those, the explosions are fantastic. Boom, boom, boom. Wait, there's a third one? So many more pirates than I remember. Huh. Anyway, though, with that, we have cleared off half of the research facility. Before I go further though, I want to jump up here. As we have this window that, um, let me just blow this stuff up. Uh, maybe I need a full charge shot. Maybe it doesn't work with the wave beam. Maybe it's... Why aren't you exploding? Um, missile? A uh, super missile? What? Why are you indestructible? You usually explode. Well, destroying the crates underneath at work. But if we scan this, yet again we have more ice. Probably stopping us from accessing that... I don't know what that's actually stopping us from doing. But if we take a look at our map, we are in the control tower. One of the artifacts should be in this room. But we just don't know how to get it. So let's make our way onwards. And we can't get it, by the way. Spoilers, we can't get an artifact yet. Whoa. So let's just make our way onwards. Got some more of these bombs. And this next room, we're going to come across something very interesting. Here it is. Cutscene time. Just a short one. Bit of a dramatic one, actually. We have this guy. It's a flying jellyfish. We have flying jellyfish guy. Just sitting in that containment field. And no matter what we do, we actually can't proceed until... Oh wait, that door locks as well? Wow, I did not know that. So we're stuck in this room until we do a specific something. 
Yeah. So I'll leave that till last. That thing over there is a Metroid. All of these things are studying Metroids. They are considered to be across the whole franchise, obviously. The namesake of the Metroid franchise. It is the ultimate weapon that the pirates have been using. And, oh, this is actually interesting. I want to read this one. So, the reconstruction of Ridley. So, this is talking about several improvements making it Meta Ridley. Unfortunately, what I said at the beginning, Meta Ridley, because it's mainly metal, that's not why it's called that. It's because it's Meta Genetic Improvements. I still think the Metal Ridley, Meta Ridley. I, I still prefer that idea. That's probably what they thought of first. But Metroids are considered to be the ultimate weapon the pirates are using. And they, they like to control them. They are very tough, except they are also susceptible. Wait, there's a pirate data on this thing. They are also weak to the cold. Which is why this place in the Fendrano Drifts is a great research lab for the Metroids. Upon scanning this creature though, we actually have the Metroid in our logbook. And once you scan this guy from SR388, he will burst out of the containment field. And tactics, after shooting him for a bit, he will be indestructible while he gets bigger. Now he's a bigger floating jellyfish, but now he's a dead floating jellyfish. Oh, and he's not even floating. He's just gone. That poor jellyfish. Deadliest jellyfish in the world. Oh, in the galaxy, though, apparently. Except for the weakness to cold. Metroids need to get over that. And I think that's what the pirates are trying to do with the Metroids and Phazon. They're trying to get rid of the weakness to cold, because that is pretty much its only weakness. Even though I'm not using any cold against it. But, ooh. Repel Metroids, they do die, but there's a lot of them in different places, as we'll come across later. And... Oh, oh yes! So, in the Spiral Sector, which is where we are now on Talon 4. Sorry, Talon 4 is in the Spiral Sector, and they're working on Project Helix. Coincidence? I think not. Well, maybe it is. I didn't even know this game had all of that names before I came up with my username, but... Yeah! This game is perfect! Maybe not perfect, but I love this game. So we got some scanning things, just more about Phazon and stuff. We can kill these guys from up here and take cover in bad cover, because you can shoot through the railings, I guess. But we can take cover through these guys. They're taking a lot more hits. The wave beam isn't as weak as the power beam. Actually, I think it's the same strength in terms of just sheer damage output. But more scanning things, got Hunter Metroids it's talking about, won't be seeing any of them for a while. And especially not in this research lab. East Quarantine Cave has been secured. Talking a lot about the Quarantine Cave and Project Titan. But over here we have Metroid biology and more stuff about the Metroids. Blah blah blah. Over here we have... Um. Oh, that was an... Wait, why did you have extra spaces? That's just got way more space before anything starts. Metroid dissection. Uh, just more about Metroids, really. So yeah, they, they really want to find out about Metroids. And just in case you guys were wondering, you can obviously see it in the bios, but... All the pirate data and the Chosen Law... And the Chosen Law? Chosen Law. They do have titles corresponding to each log. As you can see here, like Metroid Studies would have been one of the ones we just looked at. I assume there's a lot about Metroids actually. But they do have specific names, so if you're looking online to try and get anything, you can do that and find out. Scanning this, more about the Quarantine Cave and Phase on Ore. Hmm, so they're using Pro Project Titan, which is mainly around Phase on Ore in the quarantine cave. Okay, did I miss anything? Oh, we have another one of you guys. Does scanning you? Oh, I can't scan you. Darn it. Yes, so we can break you out. So, something I haven't I've somehow seemed to neglect. You can actually destroy all of these things with missiles. Uh, come on. And die. Maybe? Okay, I guess just... 
Maybe the wave beam is weaker than the power beam. If not, then I guess it's just that the game is a lot harder than I remember it being on on veteran. But not hard enough to make me die unless I'm dancing in lava. Oh, okay. I want to scan this guy. So he will dig down almost immediately after attacking or if you hit him even once, he will dig down, refill his health. This is the Ice Beetle. I don't think this guy is missable. He might be. It'll appear on screen if he is. I can actually just take a look to find out if he is right now. Uh, no, doesn't look like it. I actually, wait, wait. No, looks like the Ice Beetle lives another day, I think. I don't know, you guys can see it, but the best way to take him out is just a missile, because one shot kill- wait, what? Where'd you come from? Oh, I guess there's more than one in the room. That makes sense. Anyway, though, we have a very dark room. I want to pull out my power beam, take out this pirate over here. Completely missed the pirate over here. But the reason why I want to pull out my power beam in here is because we have some flying pirates down there. And that was a pathetic excuse of a super missile. But yeah, those explosions are really annoying. That's why I like using super missiles, just take them out quickly. Because they're really annoying enemies. But before I scan that red thing, we have a massive containment unit down there with three levels of security, even though you can't see it all that well. On three different levels in this room, we have a control panel that will deactivate a different level of the security around that force field. Testing of thermal imaging software complete. We can download it if we get past that force field, it seems. And as I continue to make my way down, I don't think there's any enemies. There might be some turrets, though. Are there turrets? Yes, I see you hiding down there. And that- Oh, my missiles are low. Uh, maybe I'll stick to the wave beam. Super missiles. They- they eat through your missiles very quickly. So the problem with the wave beam is that it can be a bit too direct and like- So if I'm shooting from up here, it might have hit that walkway before it gets to the thing. And take a jump of- A jump of leap. I don't know. So that's the second panel. Deactivated. We are one step closer to the thermal imaging software. Or thermal visor, as it is actually called. Although we can't scan it because of the force field is blocking us. And there is the final panel. And now we can collect the thermal visor right after I scan all these panels all around me. So, just more about the thermal imaging system. Is that all it's about? Really? Well, that was boring. Seems we have a white door here that we cannot get through with any of our weapons. We have some Metroids around the place too. None on this floor. Why isn't... So all of these are moving, but why isn't this one? Huh. Oh well, missiles don't break those ones though. Upon collecting this, though, the thermal visor, we have lasers shooting- no, no, we don't have lasers shooting out of our eyes. Imagine if we did, though. That'd be so awesome. So sorry for the semi-boring scan field episode here, but as the power drops out here, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye bye